WordPress in higher education. Um, my background is uh, having worked at a number of schools, including uh, Bates and Dartmouth, and I now work as an online media consultant and strategy for learning organizations. I'm going to uh, go through some ways of thinking about WordPress and higher education this morning. And I'm wanting to leave as much time as possible to hear your stories. And so, first of all, I would encourage interruptions uh, at any point that uh, you feel you need to share something that's relevant. Um, and at the end, I really want to leave a little time to, uh, to, uh, to, to find out a little bit more about what's important to you. Um, I'm going to talk about the definition of word strategy that I use, um, some of the challenges that I've found and the opportunities that go along with those in using WordPress and higher ed. Um, I'm going to share some of the uh, some of the sites that I think are doing very good work, um, and some of those schools are in the showcase, but many aren't. So there's some uh, some additional examples of schools that I'd love to have you take a look at. Um, some of the key benefits of using WordPress in higher education that I find are very convincing of the um, IT departments and the marketing and communications departments. Um, and then, uh, if there is time, uh, some of the plugins that we found to be really useful in uh, providing the kind of uh, online experience that, um, that our schools need. So first of all, yeah, I have to do a couple quizzes. There'll be one at the beginning and one at the end, um, and you didn't have to study. How many of you are working with a college or university um, in either a staff or a contractor role right now? Excellent. How many are interested? Um, how many of you are using WordPress right now for public facing communications? And how many are moving and migrating toward doing so? Great, most of you already are. How many are using WordPress for alumni communities or other kinds of collaboration a la BuddyPress? Super, we have a lot to learn from you this weekend and that's what I'm really excited about. So first of all, um, I start with Lisa Welchman's uh, definition of web strategy. I know the word strategy can mean anything, as goals can and objectives can. But specifically, how to tie the business objectives of either the department, the division, or the school to the work that you're doing. So whatever role you're in, whether it's in management, in development, in production, in editorial, we want success. And so being well-tuned to those needs sometimes in my experience is a very challenging thing to do in, in higher education with so many constituents and so many traditions in place. So that's what I'm going to focus on this morning. One of the challenges that can be an opportunity is governance of, of, of online communications in higher education. Often um, we have decentralized departments, each of which have their own um, uh, department, department staff or contractors, their own websites, their own initiatives. And there are very good reasons for that. The evolution of the uh, academy has led to that kind of a governance structure. Uh, over the past five years, there's also been a real interest in really centralizing into one group um, online communications, either, and it tends to be like a pendulum swinging back and forth between IT and marketing. Um, and what I find at the schools that are doing a really good job is that they have a federated governance process. So um, how many schools have uh, lots of individual departments doing their own things? How many have a great focus of online communications within, say, the marketing or IT departments, one or the other? And how many have federated so that there are campus-wide guidelines and vision that they're working within? And that reaffirms my experience as well. Um, and I think moving in that direction really helps, and I think WordPress can help move in that direction as well. Um, teams of practice. Um, in higher education, there are often people with different professional skills that live in different departments. And um, the big question is, how do you encourage senior staff and, and management of the online communications initiative to really have a coordination and a consistency um, amongst all of those? And um, I find communities of practice work very well, depending on the size of your institution. Getting people on the same page involves um, um, having shared experiences. And so uh, another, uh, another strategy um, that I've seen work very well, and it's worked very well for us, has been to have consistent principles that can be applied no matter whether you're developing 
a collaboration community, a public website, or an application. And so these are starting from the most basic, down low, so I'll read them, uh, working up. Um, uh, the, the, the online experience needs to be dependable. It needs to work and needs to be anywhere. It needs to be intuitive, simple publishing, which is a key WordPress benefit, as well as usability. Um, helpful in terms of search engine optimization, people being able to find what they need to find um, in a very large amount of procedural information that's often generated within um, higher educational departments. Um, and then, um, uh, I think these are a little bit more ethereal for ephemeral, but, but still pretty important. Um, the experience needs to be interesting, welcoming, personalizable, and meaningful. So um, uh, if people are going to spend the time to work and dig down through your website, especially if they're prospective students who are just learning about your school, how do you really stand out in an attention economy as providing um, something that's more meaningful um, a, a college experience that's more meaningful for them than another might be, especially for prospective students. So in terms of actually building a strategy, um, how many people here have a really good, clear executive sponsor in a leadership role who can um, uh, provide uh, guidance and support when difficult decisions need to be made? Um, how many agree that that is a real way of uh, guaranteeing success, <laughs> um, that's a very hard thing to do. Very often there are multiple sponsors. Um, but in terms of developing a web strategy, having that clear governance and authority is really important. Um, how long will a, a particular strategy be applicable for? Are you looking at an 18 month period where your campus web strategy is going to be in effect and then you're going to revisit it? And that of course is how many years of internet time? Um, the vision and principles I just mentioned, having common principles that can be applied to all projects. What are the specific goals that are achieving um, the institutional objectives? Um, what are the projects and resources? And then as those layers of the web strategy are complete, then, then you define the user experience. What is it that, what service are we really providing? Who's the constituent? How do we define success in a tactical way? And there's, there's often a tendency to want to jump right to the production, and the production is satisfying. It's great seeing uh, deliverable, and it's great having people provide feedback, but unless we really make sure ahead of time uh, that, that our definition of success is clear and the person defining success is clear, um, um, it's fun, but it may or may not be successful. Uh, how many people have used nominal group technique for prioritizing? Um, another issue is lists of projects and lists of initiatives. They come in from everywhere, whether you're a unified group or you're a distinct group. Uh, and, and in this field, people will see countless exciting, shiny things out on the web, and they want all of them on your website. And they actually are all pretty cool. And you're one person or two people, or if you're lucky, like be you, however many. Um, so how do you decide amongst those? Um, Xerox, I believe Xerox many years ago, um, uh, recommended a technique where you get the full list, you have all of your constituents rank them 1 through 10, 1 through 20, or if you have very creative constituents, 1 through 100, um, and begin the process by having at least a baseline understanding of what of all of those priorities are valuable. One of, one of the uh, criteria might be that it's scalable across the entire institution. Um, but getting all those together, ranking them, and then developing which the relationship between those initiatives and strategic goals um, uh, allows you to prioritize a variety of projects, some of which can be actually quite complex. Um, <laughs> Campus-wide events calendars, campus-wide uh, uh, tours, um, and focusing on those and getting them done and doing it well rather than doing a lot of things um, haphazardly. Um, uh, from my experience, I've seen it, it, it makes a big difference. Um, in my current consulting work um, with the main department of education, which has a lot of similarities to a college or university in that there are a lot of work groups with a lot of departments. There is an established uh, technology base. Um, there is a pretty wide constituency. Um, 
we have done a domain architecture because um, all the various sites within um, an educational institution need to relate to each other. And um, as we'll see, multi-site allows many schools to be able to do that quite effectively. But even when there are different departments using Dreamweaver or other CMSs, um, the, those, all of those properties need to interrelate. So we created a, a whole domain architecture where we took all of the various enterprise level as well as um, consumer level um, applications and try to figure out how they relate to each other so that we could make sure that they interoperate, so that we could make sure that um, uh, as new tools come into place, sort of like a, a town plan, um, as new buildings, new systems get constructed, that they fit within to this overall architecture. And we started with um, a scale, in this case from left to right, of how much a site or an online experience is crafted, how much attention does it get, to, uh, to editorial, to um, design, uh, to functionality, all the way through to the other extreme with social media, which has a great influence on our schools and um, needs to be seen in an integrated way in order to achieve goals, but needs to be handled differently. So in doing so, we, we, we mapped the core websites, the admissions websites, departmental websites, programs and initiatives, um, communities of practice, whether those are um, course sites, alumni groups and alumni classes, and then how those relate to various uh, public internet services. And I'm going to use this structure to take a couple of minutes to go through schools that are I think, doing very good work in each of those realms, and several of which are doing a very good job of integrating all of those, so that not only do you have a sense of uh, that, that you are within that school's online presence, but also there's a smooth flow. One of the things that's been reported many, many times with clients I've worked with is that there's a speed bump when a person is a prospective student and becomes a student. They have a new email address. They have new logins. They have new systems they're using. They do that for four years, and then they lose the email address. They lose the work that they've done within the proprietary systems. And so um, integrating through the full lifespan of a member of the college community, from being a prospective student, to being a student, to being an alum, to being a very successful alum who in your estate is giving back to the institution, seeing that full potential lifespan means that the online experience needs to have continuity. Um, and also in terms of alums providing mentorship opportunities to undergraduates as a benefit to um, taking a four-year tuition and spreading it out over a lifetime, which is a, a much easier marketing case to be made. So how does WordPress and other, and other to online tools allow us to have that lifespan perspective? So I'm going to work through a, a number of schools here. And if, if there are people here from these schools, can you raise your hand? And then at the end, I'd love to hear recommendations for others because this is a snapshot from the past month. And even this morning, I, I uh, learned of some really exemplary um, uh, SIN schools that um, I would include in the next version. So um, Lafayette has done a very good, good job, um, Lafayette College in, in Pennsylvania, of rolling out WordPress all the way from its home site through student blogs through alumni um, and through individual departments. And um, it's worth taking a look at this and also the, um, the firm that they worked with, Vigay, that has been affiliated in the past with Duke, did a very good um, case study. Um, this is a very, a very good example of, of integrating, uh, using WordPress to integrate across the lifespan. Wheaton College, um, is there anybody from Wheaton here today? You want to say anything about your successes that you think people would learn from? Um, I use the mic. <laughs> yeah, please do. Yeah, please. Well, we started off with a we were trying to do a redesign and a CMS uh, overhaul at the same time, and um, I, I think going slow actually helped us uh, quite a bit, and we sort of did it on our own. Um, the redesign was done by an outside firm, but I did a lot of the work on the back end. Um, 
I think you know having a central place really helped us. I don't want to take up too much time, but um, you know we we were we were a web group of three people, and we were the place to go if you needed web stuff uh, <coughs> help. We we don't do all the updates. Obviously, we have a few hundred people across campus doing updates. Um, so far, it's gone very well. I mean, WordPress has handled everything we've thrown at it, and um, we couldn't be happier. Uh, Name. Bill Fennin from Wheaton College. Name and face, so people who are looking and moving in this direction, Bill is a resource. Um, is anybody here from Australia? <laughs> um, Queen's College in Melbourne um, ha has done something that I think um, a number of the colleges I've worked with have wanted to, and that is that the front-facing site is only targeted to prospective students. All on-campus procedural information um, is in another location. To, and, and actually, it's only available to you after you uh, become a member of the community. And so uh, they've done a very nice job of, of, ver of focusing very tightly on prospective students on their homepage. Um, BU, anybody here from BU? Did anybody here that worked on this particular admissions project? Uh, is there anything that any of you would like to share about this at the microphone? Um, uh, it's been out now for a bit. I'll be presenting about that later. Excellent. So come back later for more of this. Um, from a user point of view, um, the ability to explore lots and lots of different stories about what it would be like to be a student here at KU, to then follow through and find other activities and explore, and all of that being through video and through a very nice um, interface. Um, is another good, are other good reasons to come and hear them present on this. Um, I'm going to show a couple of Lafayette screens because uh, of the consistency um, that you'll see across uh, all of the different um, the different subsites, but also in terms of integration. So um, a challenge in higher education is integrating enterprise data that's in course catalog systems and databases, that's in um, uh, people directories. Um, and I'm hoping that there will be some folks that will talk over the, the course of the rest of the day today about the ways that they've made that integration with WordPress as a front end and as a, a gateway into um, enterprise data. Um, this is the Department of Environmental Sciences at, at uh, Virginia, and um, a department site that focuses very much on key messages. If you are first finding out about this program, what is it about the program that's, that, that, that is distinctive, and the sub-programs as well. So it's a, a, a more sophisticated entry into the department. I am a, an alum of the College of Communications here, and I saw in the last a uh, few months that uh, this site has been refreshed and is actually quite exciting with a lot of flash, um, but a lot of uh, depth as you drill down more deeply. Is there anybody that was involved with this project? And will you talk about it later? Yes. Hey, all right. <laughs> I think this is the last video example I'm going to give, um, and I'm assuming you better talk about this later, but this is a really wonderful front end navigation if you are interested in study abroad to pick by topic or by location. And again, um, an engaging way to drill down to more specific information. This, this front end belies the fact that if you have interest in, in, in studying in Shanghai, there's a lot of procedural uh, information underneath. But instead of using traditional architecture to kind of drill down, click, 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 um, uh, this is a very engaging way to get down into that information. Uh, this, is, this is on the WordPress showcase site. This is the Master of Arts in Teaching. Um, the interesting thing about this site is that the calls to action are right up front. Request information. Which best describes you? I want to become a teacher. I want to become an, uh, an administrator. Clicking on the next button pulls up a modal dialog box that, that prompts you through a number of questions and immediately gets a conversion. Information about you and what you want to learn. Very clear and up front. Down a little bit lower, there's an apply button that does the same thing. News and research. Is there anybody here today who's worked on the Harvard Gazette? Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say about this project uh, that might be of interest? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love WordPress and I love working on it. That's all. That's it. <laughs> so for anybody who's watching this who didn't hear, she said she loved working on this and she loves WordPress and that's what she wants to share. Um, 
Vanderbilt has moved um, a, a very interactive presentation of videos, um, which then link to um, pages that embed YouTube videos. Um, again, in a way that allows you to follow your interest and dig down from a very generic news site into um, a lot of really good, meaty presentation of news stories and research. Um, is there anybody from MIT that worked on this project? This is a research site that includes um, stories, workbooks, video, and interactive demos of work that Doc Edgerton did. Um, the front end is um, is WordPress, and there are, there are a lot there are a lot of flash pieces. But this is a, a full uh, research site about Doc Edgerton and his work um, with high-speed photography. This is worth taking a look at. Very clean interface and lots and lots of interactive experiences. Plymouth State has done a very good job of making its um, campus-wide goals and strategies transparent so that people can all be on the same page. Um, this site, the Strategic Plan of 2012, is very explicit not only about what the college, what the university is trying to achieve, but also what they are achieving over time. And so, in this case, WordPress is being used to tie reports and news stories and other material to the strategic goals. Quick comment on that. Say again? Another interesting thing Plymouth State is doing with WordPress, um, their library catalog. And the library website are actually run using WordPress as a back end. Is Casey here today? Um, Casey is no longer at Plymouth State, and we actually aren't using Scribblio anymore. Oh, no! <laughs> yes, ah. sadly. Okay. So if you have further questions about using WordPress in a library setting, can you raise your hand and say your name so we can learn more? I'd be happy to talk to people about it if they're right. interested. I'm Chris Strauber from Tufts. Thanks. Uh, the Neiman Journalism Lab does a great job of multi-author um, uh, reporting integrated with Twitter and um, <coughs> very, in a very clean interface, as well as um, a, a very good research space for um, work on the future of journalism. I said I wouldn't think use another view example. You have to see this one moving. This site actually on the front page has a really wonderful illustration of the energy used and saved and the recycling done here on campus that then again, and I'm going to reiterate this, drills down into things that you can do, drills down into specific um, success stories. So take a look at this. Um, is anybody here from Oregon today? Um, Oregon State University was celebrating its 100th anniversary of um, their extension service, um, serving uh, people all around the state, and so they fitted up a car, a social media vehicle, and they drove around the state and covered it, um, multiple media, and used a, a WordPress site to actually aggregate all that as they moved through. For clients, the back end is not something we necessarily need to surface. And so the departments that do a good job of presenting a single point of contact um, seem to be more effective and more successful at supporting clients. Um, the University of Texas uh, Medical Center has a, a very nice clean front end that um, covers all the way from print publishing to online applications and to <coughs> publishing content. And uh, this is a really good example of, of presenting that information. Um, courses and conferences. Um, the University of Mary Washington, um, led by Jim Broom, has done some amazing work with MU before it was integrated and became multi-site in allowing um, a great deal of academic freedom for courses, for people to um, have a blog space. And so many of their departments, um, many of their courses are actually hosted and visible um, on that site at UMU, UMW. Um, Worcester um, is using BuddyPress to do something similar, but they're integrating blogs and also forums. Um, University of Texas has a very nice implementation of gravity forms for integrating with registration for uh, uh, seminars and um, including payment integration with PayPal. 
And uh, is anybody here today from the City University of New York? Um, the Body Press implementation at the uh, CUNY Academic Commons is definitely worth looking at. Um, and the developer for this project is working with Automatic on developing new plugins. And uh, as a person who's been immersed in BuddyPress now for a number of months, um, it's, it's amazing. And the work that's being done is really worth paying attention to in moving from the presentation of the institution, the departments, the home pages, and getting down into in a collaborative engagement. Um, Tufts. I have a question about that. A question? The So the question is about how BuddyPress is used for the Academic Commons at CUNY. BuddyPress is now a single plugin, which sits on top of um, either single or multi-site WordPress and adds a number of collaborative functions on top of the existing WordPress functions. So in essence, um, this is a WordPress site with BuddyPress plugins. And um, uh, are there any BuddyPress plugin developers here today? There, there's some amazing functionality that's being added on top of that. So there are a number of BuddyPress plugins. And in essence, um, uh, this allows you to have a single site that integrates blogs, forums, wiki pages, um, Twitter-like status announcements, private messaging between individuals in those situations where in your college community you need to have a more protected, robust, intellectual property protected space for collaboration. In a lot of cases, people, classes, alumni classes will go out to Facebook and start a group. Um, but when you have courses or um, sustaining communities of practice, for instance, uh, people majoring in economics um, over time, um, unlike learning management systems that kind of wipe out the information about a course at the end of the term, um, sustaining communities of practice are optimally, I think, in higher education, optimally targeted for buddy press. Any other questions about BuddyPress? So there's a talk tomorrow. Um, John John James Jacoby will be talking about BuddyPress development. And he's the he's the founder, initiator, original initiator of BuddyPress. So come to that. Yes. Yeah, we you mentioned LMS. We're evaluating whether we should focus more on WordPress with BuddyPress or whether we should focus more on Moodle for an instructional environment. Um, probably using some video conferencing. Which would you suggest? And why? I have done some research on that, and if you literally um, uh, do Google searches for um, BuddyPress as an LMS, BuddyPress and Moodle, um, there's a good amount of um, research on that. Um, there, the benefits to using BuddyPress are um, uh, support, ease of use, and sustainability over time. The strengths of Moodle are the ability to tie into your back-end course registration systems, and I think you could find out tomorrow at the session um, about even more instances where BuddyPress is being used as an LMS. And do you mind, I, I didn't get a chance to repeat that question, but I think in my answer I, I referenced it. Could you say your name and your school? Uh, sure. Uh, Jonathan Stiebel, and I'm with a startup that is servicing higher education. Great, Jonathan Stiebel. And I'm really interested out of this weekend at finding out, finding more agencies who are um, able to be supporting migrations in the education environment. Um, so hopefully we'll all get a chance to talk more about that. Um, Tufts is doing something similar in that they're integrating a more blogging environment, but also making it available for um, academic teams. Um, and this, is there anybody from Tufts here today? This is an evolution from the previous um, Tufts comments. I think it's worth taking a look at it. One feature is that um, an individual who has an external blog or an external RSS feed from Flickr um, can have that come into their activity stream. So when they post externally a blog, people who are following that person within this space get notification. And I think the idea of integrating um, social media presence into a space, um, uh, it makes a lot of sense, and there, this is a good example. Um, Bowling Green State University um, uses their blog tool, they call it blogs, but it also hosts academic departments um, and other um, um, official or more formal communications. Um, this is a different model, uh, and this is a model we use at Bates. For admissions bloggers, for um, students for admissions, um, 
Lafayette, uh, Lafayette is actually hosting their blog posts on their site. Other schools encourage students to post their blogs elsewhere so that they can own them and they're portable and they can use them for various things, and then integrates those posts into um, an admissions blog site. Arts. Um, Dartmouth Colleges, Hopkins Center for the Arts has done a very nice job of integrating their branding design, their graphic design, with functionality to include calendars of upcoming events, ticket registration, um, video, promotional videos. That's worth taking a look. Um, the MIT 150th um, uh, celebration this year, I believe, um, include, is in, includes a digital gallery of many items um, from MIT history and the ability to comment on them. And so this is a little bit like the Victorian Albert Museum about five or six years ago in London that allowed people to share their observations, um, not only in the gallery of a particular piece, but also um, in a more virtual way um, to increase engagement. Um, this is Syracuse University, and, and they're worth taking a look at because they have a very interesting way of, of taking a timeline um, of upcoming lectures and having that appear. Students are using WordPress. Um, I know we have somebody here who is involved with developing CoPress, um, uh, uh, student journal, uh, newspapers um, and activities groups um, are doing some really good work with WordPress. Alumni Communications, the University of Toronto has uh, integrated a lot of success stories from alums, um, as well as hosting individual classes. And I just learned this morning that Mount Holyoke is doing a very nice job with rolling out WordPress multi-site for individual classes where um, uh, themes and common functions are provided, but the class can determine its own look and how it's using the functions. Um, is anybody here from Clark today? Um, in six weeks, Clark took uh, WordPress plus WP Touch and um, created a, a, a rapid prototype and, and actually a pretty good mobile site that um, pr presented the information from a mobile perspective. Um, that's worth taking a look. Um, Adrian College um, moved their main site over to WordPress, but only so it could feed mobile. Their main goal was to get the RSS feeds everywhere to be able to uh, pull it into their mobile application, which is not a WordPress application. So the kinds of things I've been talking about that, that um, are convincing of making a migration to WordPress, and I won't say much about this because it seems that most of you are already doing this, um, a lot of it has to do with ease of use and the ability for um, people to use the back end or even the front end editor to up add and update content. Even the best system, if it's hard to use, is not going to get used. Um, this will be posted, so you can certainly take a look at these, and these are probably pretty familiar to you. Um, but um, uh, in discussions about moving to a new CMS, um, WordPress usually stacks up um, pretty high. I have found over the past four years a number of plugins that have been really consistent and very useful. This list I'll also publish. I'm going to point out just a couple of them very quickly, um, and then I'm hoping over the weekend um, uh, lots of other ideas will arise because it is amazing how much is going on in the development space. I'm not a developer. I am here giving gratitude for everybody who has been adding to WordPress and making it so robust and so usable. Um, a couple of things that um, I'll mention that are very helpful. Enable media replace. <laughs> the ability for um, a photo that's been uploaded and then integrated into a page, either into a gallery, um, to be able to go back and simply swap out that file without making another change, that's a very nice plugin to have. Page columnists. There are many instances where we don't want to lock in the main content area to individual columns, and page columnists is a very nice plugin that allows you to add a next page um, WordPress um, break, but it actually makes it into resizable columns in case you need to do that. Um, Tiny MCE Advanced. There may be other plugins that do this, but one of the most helpful things is giving a drop-down of predefined styles so that the markup can continue to be semantic if you need a pull quote or if you need to do other kind of styling. 
without allowing people to get into the HTML. And to be able to have that as an additional drop down is really, really helpful. Um, content audit um, uh, is from Stephanie Leary at the University of Texas. Um, in essence, it notifies you of stale content. It notifies, notifies the author after a certain period of time by email, and then notifies you to make sure that content is actually looked at. Even if there's no changes made, if it's opened and resaved, um, it then takes it out of queue. This is really critical as sites get larger. How many people here are working on sites that have, uh, or on domains that have more than, say, 10 subsites with, with more than 1,000 pages? So keeping track of that, this is very, very helpful. And I'll post these um, examples of some other plugins and functions that are very useful as well. I'm going through them pretty quickly, but I, I, I find more and more get integrated into WordPress core, but there's some real benefit to some of these uh, outside. And BuddyPress, for those of you who are using it, um, uh, the developers have come up with a plugin that in essence give you a wiki functionality of having a collaborative document that you work on together. So I think that that's a, a, that kind of development is very helpful as we're moving into collaborative communities. So my last quiz for you, um, I actually posed during, during the presentation who's involved in some of these topics. And if you have other topics, uh, projects that you've worked on that you'd like to share, I'm really looking forward to talking with you uh, over the course of the weekend. Thanks very much.